Hi everyone. I welcome you all in the second cloud-based international conference on computational systems for health and sustainability in view of COVID-19. I am Dr. Ashish Seth, professor at School of Global Convergence Studies at Inha University, South Korea. Presently, I am deputed at Inha University, Tashkent. So I hope that you all are staying fit in this pandemic time. Today, I'll be talking about blockchain adoption trends in pandemic time. First of all, I would like to welcome all the delegates, the presenters, the participants of this cloud-based conference. And my special thanks to Professor Dr. S. Sridhar for inviting me in this conference and uh, also providing me an opportunity to share my views on the present pandemic situation and to discuss on available technology solutions. In this occasion also, I came to know that s -Byte technologies are also recognized the contribution made by various peoples in research and academics. And also, uh, these peoples are honored by, by the s -Byte technologies by presenting an awards to them. I congratulate all the award winners. As we know that hard work is the key to success. And similarly, I believe that motivation is the key for hard work. And this kind of awards will definitely uh, uh, put a great role to keep uh, the peoples doing the good work. So I would say I would like to highly appreciate the efforts of Dr. S. Ridhar for, for providing such a knowledge sharing platform for all of us. We all know that today we have stuck in this pandemic situation and our life is stuck with with we don't have any information that what is going to happen and most of our activities are shifted to stay at home mode though we have a uh, excellent technology with us but because the things comes immediately to us and we were not prepared to deal with this kind of situation we don't have a clear picture I am Dr. Abhay Kumar, Vice Chancellor, IEC University, Himachal Pradesh. At the outset, allow me to congratulate Professor Sridhar and S. Byte Technologies for organizing this cloud-based international workshop on 25th of July 2020. It would be worthwhile to mention that during these times when the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted every sector including education. Professor Sridhar and S. Byte Technologies are doing a yeoman's job by providing a platform online for such workshops as well as conferences to the educators as well as the students. Now, when we talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, it is a global affair and when the lockdown started, on the 22nd of March for the first time, every educational institution except a few scrambled to provide online education to students. I must honestly accept that even at IEC University where I am the Vice Chancellor, we initially uploaded videos on the YouTube, sent mailers, used WhatsApp groups, chat rooms, that means whatever we could lay our hands on to teach the students, to impart knowledge to the students online. Well, of course, within a few days and week, we had the learning management system in place. The online teaching was um, completed. The course curriculum was uh, completed and the online exams also now have been completed by now. But then uncertainty prevails all over, whether it is education, finances, economy, relationships, or even health. Now, job losses we see have occurred across industries, across the board, across levels, across geographies. When we talk about what organizations should now do is to re-architecture and reconfigure jobs along in sync with the resetting of the world. 
Now this is a statement which we have to pay heed to. I remember a, a book by Alvin Toffler which I read in 1970. He had a very futuristic view. What he said was, Copability is sometimes becoming more important than capability. Well, copability and capability are of prime importance as of now. Because as jobs are changing, work changes, workplace changes, working hours change and moreover, availability of work is also a matter of anxiety and stress. So, what should be done? We see that even the some of the final year students in our university as well who had been given job offers which have now been withdrawn what we have tried to convince them first is that maybe six months or a year in a career won't matter much and if they were employed for say about 40,000 rupees per month of salary they should never remain unemployed but they can be underemployed maybe for a year we have got them jobs in the area around the university because where our university is situated in Baddi, Himachal Pradesh, we have the largest pharma hub in Asia. Now, when this disruption continued, what were the after effects during the lockdown especially when everyone was confined to the four walls of their homes? Stress on the children, on the school going students as well as on the higher educational institution students, the teachers as well. So what could be done to relieve the mental stress and anxiety that emanated from this pandemic? We have to keep in mind that India is the youngest country in the world with the average age being almost 27 and almost about 60 crores children of the age of 25 years and below. Now, we have to be very clear in our orientation that if the jobs at present are scarce and would be in a year or so, which would be the sectors which would be most affected? Of course, we all know hospitality for instance, maybe news and entertainment except the online ones. So there are many sectors which would be affected, especially the education sector also. Can we ever think that very senior professors who are very good in the classroom cannot exhibit that prowess on an online teaching methodology because the course curriculum which has to be provided in a classroom is different from what has to be uploaded online whether it is synchronous, asynchronous learning methodology or online. What is to be considered is that we have to be very clear in one aspect that online teaching can never be a substitute of the classroom teaching, person to person contact teaching. It can be a supplement. But at least for the next year or so, I think online teaching would be having a more effective methodology as compared to any offline teaching because we don't see students coming into the classroom at present. Of course, once the new normal set in and we see the students coming to the classroom also, it is going to have an impact on the infrastructure of all the colleges and institutions. In a classroom of 60 for example, keeping social distancing in mind, we have to bifurcate the students into two or three sections. Will it be possible for the educators, the teachers to go ahead and teach all the classrooms simultaneously with the working hours and load already in place. So we have to reconfigure and re-architecture our own strategy at various educational institutions in this context. Now, it is not only this, the mental wellness and subjective well-being of the students and faculty have also to be kept in mind, rather all the citizens. The micro entrepreneurs even have gone through a very hazardous phase of life. They have lost 
द स्मॉल टी वाला द स्मॉल से कार्ड्स हु सोल्ड वेजिटेबल्स एंड अदर ईटेबल्स दे वर ऑल इन अ वेरी बैड स्टेट ऑफ हेल्थ एज वेल एज इकोनॉमिकली वेरी पुअर द माइग्रेंट लेबर ऑल दीज प्रॉब्लम हैव कम बट देन देर इज अ रे ऑफ होप इन फैक्ट we indians would definitely find opportunities out of these challenges i am very sure of this we have to keep in mind that we have to promote entrepreneurship now entrepreneurial mindset sometimes would be more important than startups no no please don't understand that i am not going to promote startups of course we have to promote entrepreneurship we already have mentorship in place at iic university and where we have industry mentors as well as faculty mentors who would be hand holding the students and we already have a few startups here but then what is more important is creating an entrepreneurial mindset which of course is a state of mind which orientates human conduct towards entrepreneurial skills and outcomes now an entrepreneurial mindset cannot be created the skills cannot be attained till someone is subjected to situations where decision is to be made it should be in a inconsistent environment with teams that may or may not be efficient and also where the outcomes might be risky what john spencer once said as i remember was that all students cannot become entrepreneurs but all the students will have to have an entrepreneurial mindset in their careers so what we have to ensure is that all our students are entrepreneurial having an entrepreneurial mindset as well as even in a job they would be requiring these mindsets because they would be best to become entrepreneurs so overall i think we are all set and geared to take up the challenges create opportunities out of this i even our faculty members have done wonders in imparting online teaching to the students for which they have never been used to before to that extent so sometimes as vice chancellor i tend to of course appreciate the health workers the security forces and all other such front line workers as corona warriors but allow me to term the teachers and faculty members in our country and across the globe as corona warriors too thank you so much friends you are welcome to yes white jedu ab this jedu ab contains lot of videos dynamically on higher education and research webinar talks on latest topics great leaders motivation soft skill information technology digital transformation conferences workshop materials technical symposiums and paper presentations leadership talks yoga information how to face interview jee mathematics and so on and so forth so please like the channel subscribe to this channel comment on every video after watching and share this channel with your friends so that everybody can enjoy this channel it is a service to the students faculty and researchers by eminent personality dr s reed was a former vice chancellor in many universities with 20 years of industrial experience and 24 years of educational experience hope you will love the channel have a good day